Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Hewlett Packard 85 personal computer. This one got a cute little 6 inch CRT. Wow, that is so beautiful. And there's a tape drive, so it's a special plug in tape drive and a printer. How about that all in one nice little compact unit? It was introduced in 1980 and it was obsolete in 87. When it was introduced, it was for sale. Um, it was about $2,750 and that is in 2024 money, 8000 Dollars, So you can imagine that is a lot of money. And uh, this one was a super, super popular product. It was a success, a super success with Hewlett Packard. Um, what else can I say? This is a, of course, a super, super slow, uh, basic computer uh, compared to today's uh, technology. It's uh, 16 kilobytes of RAM. But you can, of course, uh, upgrade this. I really hope this one works. So we're going to try and power it up. Here it is inside its original carrying case. It is big as a suitcase. <laughs> it is on my weight scale. It is 13.3 kilos. Ugh. And it's nice and soft and uh, protecting the unit pretty good. This little compartment here, you can access from the outside. That's for wires and such small loose items. You got two little compartments here. And you can imagine that will be the volume for the two compartments. And then here is the unit in a nice and soft box. I think it's gonna be one hand on the power switch. 20 watts, 18 watts, and yes, look at that. We got a picture. It's looking like it is a live, but there is something with the focus. I don't know if that is difficult to show, but it's very, maybe, oh, maybe it's just the screen. Maybe there's just some dirt on the back side of this one. Because if I... Yeah, over here it's much better. So here's the rear side of the HP 85. The 85 model comes without any IEEE or anything like that. You need to plug in uh, upgrade modules for all these uh, features. There isn't any external connectivity here. And it's even looking like the fuse. Is that original the way that this is made? I don't know. So the on off switch is just like the 87 located here on the back. And brightness is also hidden here in the, on the back. So there's not a lot of stuff to get confused about. So here's my first program. I just made a little program that prints and so instead of printing to the screen, it actually prints out to the paper. That is so cool. <laughs> I need to figure out the, the routine for printing out on the screen instead of uh, printing out of, on the printer. But it actually also prints on the, on the screen. How nice! The bottom plastic part here, I think it's exactly the same as the HP 87. So there's also a little loudspeaker here. There's even the same sticker, the same screws. Everything here is exactly the same. So here's a little trick for you. I was of course trying to uh, to open it just the normal way as I did with my um, HP 87. But it turns out this is the button for the tape drive re uh, eject. And uh, that one on my unit here was so, so stuck 
uh, I didn't really figure out that I just needed to grab it real hard and push, I mean pull really, really hard out. And then at the end, of course, it came out. But that is how it's supposed to be. So <laughs> if you don't know how to open this, that is uh, definitely what you need to do. If you really try and pull uh, out the case without doing that, you're definitely going to break something. So I'm inside this beautiful HP 85. Uh, I cleaned it a little bit. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of dust coming in around the keyboard area and all that kind of stuff. And as always with these HP units, you see all sorts of um, signatures on all the different parts. And it's, yeah, it's, they're just full of signatures. So that is a lot of fun to uh, to go and search for that. I think it's initial from uh, assemblers and testers and all that kind of stuff. Maybe that is the 84. I don't know. Yeah, I was uh, a little bit afraid of the focus of the screen. I don't know if I can make the shutter show this. Because it's really difficult with the shutter speed, as you can see here. And my camera, because I'm running at 60 frames uh, with my camera here. And it seems to be more or less in synchronization with the screen updates here, right? So, isn't that funny? But it is in perfect focus my screen so i think it's uh, the plastic that's just uh, dirty so i'll go in i'll go and clean that so this is gonna be nice there's a huge difference from this uh, the 85 model to uh, my 87 i mean this one is actually older right but it looks a lot more modern the whole design here see i just Removed the two screws down there and here. And then you can tilt up the keyboard like that and get access to all the fantastic chips down here. And as you see, it's a lot more modern compared to the 87 model. See the four chips here in the middle of the picture. That will be the ROM, so that uh, they contain the entire yeah, program memory. And that is the RAM controller, and that is our 16K of RAM. That one is the keyboard interface controller. The tiny little one here is actually the CPU. A little 28-pin CPU with a multiplexed data and address uh, in only eight bits. And of course it needs, I think it's three or four clocks to the different interface chips to actually uh, move data to um, addresses because it's 16 uh, bits of address and eight bits of data. So you can imagine it takes quite a while to do that because it's all on one eight bit bus. So that is of course external memory interfacing here. And that uh, cable here is the one that goes all the way under the screen and to the external connectors like that, right? And here is the interface for the CRT. So that big chip here is the display controller. And we've got four chips right here. And that will be display memory. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, here we go. Come on. Yes, that those four. That will be display memory. And that one here is the display controller. But it's just so nice and modern for 1980. It's I'm absolutely impressed. I must say they were just so much ahead of everybody and here is the tape drive that is notoriously famous for failing when it comes to this little roller here and yeah see exactly why because this turns itself into splat 
it is very very sticky and the motor is difficult to move also because as you see here here we go can you see the plastic of this rubber band that kind of melted and it goes down to the bearings you can of course imagine if you put in your famous or even an <laughs> original tape with very very important bites on it and then it's gonna you're gonna damage everything here right but this roller don't really touch the the tape it touch the roller that moves the tape around and then this is of course the head the two track head Let's read some or write the data. And all that is uh, just fantastic. It's handled with this little board, as you can see down. I don't know if you can see so much. There's not so much to see, really. We also got two little sensors. I think it's switches. Yeah, here we go. Down here, we got the two sensors. One of them is um, tape is in, and the other one is tape is right protected switches. And unfortunately, as you can see here, my printer actually works, but look at that. There's just nothing left of life in those bands here. But luckily, this is a standard um, size. So you can, you can go and buy these and easily replace them. It's just a little bit of screw here and push here and then, and then you're in, right? And the other one here is also looking like it's just so, so, so last second of its lifetime. I was <laughs> so, so lucky to be able to print this. Isn't it amazing? Those huge motors to handle this tiny little printer. But that's just how it is. It's supposed to be big and uh, heavy, right? Yeah. I must say I'm totally, totally happy about this unit. I didn't really want to make a super long and super detailed video about my uh, HP 85. And the reason why is that Curious uh, Mark already made so many super, super good and super, super detailed videos, web pages, links with all the information you could possibly need. So I'll just put a link in my description um, to all that stuff. So there's no need that I repeat anything, waste any more bytes on the internet on this um, unit for you guys. To be honest, all I want to say is that um, we can just swap out, swap over to Peter real fast because he just sent me some uh, really nice uh, pictures uh, from his uh, HP 85. He got this uh, super cool uh, plug-in module that will uh, allow you to upload and download uh, program files directly. So there's no need for tape stations or any other, other kind of uh, connectivity, uh, external um, uh, disk drives or any such uh, thing. So that is a really, really cool uh, plug-in module. So with this uh, module plugged in, you can, of course, uh, upload a little uh, card game and uh, have a fun little game of cards. He also show how it works with uh, the HP 85 and the uh, connectivity a module for um, uh, Hewlett Packard uh, measurement uh, equipment so he can uh, really really fast and easily connect to a voltmeter and uh, measure the volts and uh, print it out on the built-in printer so that is uh, really really cool and here is the program he used to uh, to do this so thank you very much uh, Peter for showing us a really uh, cool practical use, use of this machine. So thank you very much for watching. Please come back again soon. Bye bye.